okay uh, in this lecture we will be looking at uh, the derivation of dirac equation and the representation of the various dirac matrices so dirac equation is basically the relativistic equation for the electron derived by dirac the fundamental issue in uh, schrodinger equation is we have the time derivative in first order and space derivative in second order so to make it relativistic inv invariant we have to either uh, you know make uh, time derivative second order or we have to convert the space derivative to first order so converting the time derivative into second order gives us the clean gordon equation and uh, dirac used the second methodology where he assumed that you know you he tried to linearize the spatial operator spatial differential operator okay so that is the fundamental idea so when we start with the relativistic energy expression that is e squared equal to p squared c squared plus m not squared c power 4 so instead of uh, you know directly substituting e as i h cross dou psi by dot uh, dou by dot t and uh, p as the corresponding operators as minus i h cross del which would lead to the clean gordon equation what dirac did was we didn't want the second derivative in time so we wrote this as e equal to p squared c squared plus m not squared c power 4 whole power half that is you take square root on both sides so when you take square root of e squared you will get both plus and minus so now if you substitute in this we get uh, i h cross do by do t acting on psi of r bar comma t equal to plus or minus p squared c squared so basically you can substitute for this uh, p squared as minus h cross squared so minus h cross squared c squared del squared plus m not squared c power 4 whole power half acting on psi of r bar comma t so the problem here is there is no uh, definition of square root operator square root operator here this is a square root operator so square root operator is not defined square operator we defined before a squared we can define as a into a that's how we got the p squared minus h cross del acting on minus h cross del but square root operator was not defined so what dirac uh, did was he boldly proposed that okay let me try to define the square root operator and to define the square root operator what he did was he wrote this um, e as um, he tried to write this e squared as equal to p squared c squared plus m not squared c power 4 he tried to introduce he took out one c common and introduced uh, you know uh, parameters alpha x px plus alpha y py plus alpha z pz plus some beta times m not c so this whole square this is how he has written it so now what he did was he opened up this entire thing and then try to equate both sides and obtain the conditions on these alphas and beta and they happen to be following this because when you do this opening you will get alpha x squared equal to alpha y squared equal to alpha z squared equal to beta squared equal to 1 and the other thing you will notice is that alphas and beta they all anti commute just like in poly matrices that is we will have alpha x alpha y plus alpha y alpha x equal to 0 similarly we will have alpha y alpha z plus alpha z alpha y equal to 0 so you get the point similarly alpha z alpha x plus alpha x alpha z equal to 
So you just uh, similarly you can also have expressions alpha x beta plus beta alpha x equal to 0 alpha y beta plus beta alpha y equal to 0 and alpha z beta plus beta alpha z equal to 0. So the all, all of them anti commute and uh, by pairs and they all actually square to 1. So these are the properties of alphas and beta. So obviously these cannot be numbers. So these have to be matrices. These have to be matrices. Okay, we will try to find what these matrices are in a minute. So now we have, uh, you know, E to be equal to plus R minus C times alpha X PX plus alpha Y PY plus alpha Z PZ plus beta M naught C whole, whole power half and whole squared. So that will get cancelled. So you have an you know linearized equation here. Now one thing what we should notice is you know when you try to what do you mean by this negative sign and plus sign uh, positive sign. So it hardly matters whether we take a plus sign or minus sign because when you replace alpha x by minus alpha x and alpha y by minus alpha y and alpha z by minus alpha z and beta by minus beta all these relations are still satisfied. So one can choose any one of the two signs. So we will try to choose the plus sign. And so we can write E squared. Uh, basically let us write E only because we want E. The energy is nothing but the Hamiltonian operator which now we will write as plus C times. We can write this as alpha dot P plus beta M naught C. So now we can obtain the Schrodinger equation by replacing E with IH cross by uh, dou by dou T and acting upon a psi of R bar comma T which will give you obviously H acting on psi of R bar comma T the Hamiltonian. Uh, that is not really required to write that specifically it becomes too long. So let me directly write. So C times if I substitute for P as minus I H cross del. So minus I H cross C let us write it in detail alpha X dou by dou X plus alpha Y dou by dou Y plus alpha Z dou by dou Z acting on Psi and plus beta m naught c squared acting on psi. So this equation here is what we call as the Dirac equation. Okay. So now what are these Dirac matrices that will satisfy this equation? So first thing that we have to understand is uh, all these matrices square to 1. That means the mat. So let us talk about the Dirac matrices. So since all of them square to 1, that means they can have both alphas and beta have to necessarily, they have to be matrices, they cannot be numbers, they have to necessarily have eigenvalues to be either plus 1 or minus 1. This is first thing because alpha uh, squared alpha x squared equal to alpha y squared equal to alpha z squared equal to beta squared equal to 1. All of them squared to 1. Therefore, they should necessarily have eigenvalues which are plus minus 1. This is first thing. Second thing is if you look at uh, alpha x let us say we can write alpha x as alpha x into beta squared because beta squared is 1 which we can write as alpha x into beta times beta and alpha x and beta anti commute. So you get a minus beta alpha x beta. Now if you were to consider the trace of this matrix. So if you take trace of alpha x it will be trace of minus beta alpha x beta. Okay, so if you take the minus sign out, you will get minus trace of beta alpha x beta, but then 
uh, if you cyclically change them the trace will still remain same so i can cyclically means where beta is there to put alpha x then where alpha x is there put beta and where beta is put another beta again because trace of a b c when you cyclically change a b c you will get uh, trace to be equal so that's how this that means again this will come out to be minus of trace of alpha x because beta squared is 1 so what did we see we see that the trace of alpha x has to be 0 the trace of alpha x has to be 0 that means the number of plus ones along diagonal of alpha x should be equal to the number of minus ones along diagonal so the dimension of this matrix has to be even the dimension of alpha x has to be even and so is of course alpha y alpha z and beta they also satisfy similar relations we can show that their traces also will be zero similarly arguing so what we have found is alphas and betas have to have a uh, they have to be square matrices because they are square to one they have to have plus minus one as their eigenvalues and their trace has to be zero that means the number of plus ones should be equal to the number of minus ones along the diagonal so if you look at the uh, poly matrices the poly matrices were two by two matrices the poly spin, spin matrices were basically two by two matrices that is you have sigma x equal to zero minus one uh, poly matrices zero plus one i think zero plus one one zero sigma y is uh, basically zero minus i sorry zero minus i i zero and sigma z was equal to one one zero zero minus one what one will notice is it's impossible to find a fourth matrix which will anti-commute with these three so therefore the alphas and beta of dirac uh, cannot be two by two matrices so the next dimension which is even is only n equal to four is only n equal to four right so n equal to four that means we need to look for four by four matrices so what we do is we choose beta matrix to have equal number of plus ones and minus ones along the diagonal so we take it as i zero zero i basically where i is basically you should write it as a four by four matrix like this one zero zero one and this is a zero 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 and this is zero so this should have been minus i here yeah zero 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 then you can keep a minus one zero zero minus one so the number of plus ones are equal to number of minus ones this is how you write the uh, beta matrix and then what we do is the rest of the matrices we build them from uh, we build them from uh, the poly matrices okay so let me add a new page where is a new page yeah there it is okay so the rest of the three matrices we can write them as alpha x is equal to what i'll do is i'll put it in the two by two matrix zero sigma x sigma x zero so basically it's a four bound matrix this is a two by two matrix this is a two by two matrix this is a two by two this is a two by two and similarly alpha y will be zero sigma y sigma y zero and alpha z will be zero sigma z sigma z zero so these matrices in this form are called the standard dirac matrices and this automatically tells us because these are four by four matrices that means our psi the dirac wave vector or the wave function should be actually a four vector that is psi one psi two psi three psi four all of them of course functions of r bar and t so this is called the dirac four vector and sometimes they are also called as the Dirac spinner. This is called the Dirac spinner. Okay, 
So this is the basic uh, Dirac equation and the uh, way to obtain the Dirac matrices which will try to satisfy the equation. So one can notice that uh, this equation here is actually not in a covariant form that is you cannot easily see that it satisfies the relativistic invariance. So in the next video we will see how to write the Dirac equation in the covariant form. Thank you.